let's uh, let's jump into some of those questions. Um, the first one that I have here, I guess, Bart, is uh, what are some strategies that we have for for selecting a mesh size? Okay, I've got a, I've got a couple strategies that I use for a mesh size. Um, usually, it involves um, the largest mesh that I can, the largest elements that I can possibly do that I end up with elements that are as rectangular or as well shaped as I can do. Um, and often things like that are determined if I have small features in the model, I may have to go in and make elements smaller or bigger to do that. Now someplace I always start, FEMAP has an automatic mesh size that you just go in and say throw a mesh on it. And I have found that mesh for most parts of the model and it does it does a pretty good job of choosing that size. Now that said, I'll put it in and I'll run it and look at my results. And, and a couple of the things that I look for in the results is I talked about stress gradients across elements. I had a professor one time who uh, who joked about using the three contour rule. He says if you plot the stresses in your model with uh, contours and you see more than three contour lines crossing a single element, it's an indication that you need more elements in that area to capture the stress gradient properly. Um, and that's that's not such a bad one, but you know, whether you use three or four or five is largely irrelevant. But if you look at your model and you see a large stress distribution crossing a single element, it's often a good indication that you probably need more elements in that area. Uh, the other thing that I look at for mesh sizing is, um, as I've said, rectangular elements. And sometimes I'll run, I'll run an analysis and I'll discover an area that I hadn't thought of as a, as a stress, high stress area will have oddly shaped elements in it and I'll end up with funny stress gradients in that area. And in that case, I'll want to go back can either refine the mesh or just change the mesh so that I get rectangular elements and I cut the stress gradient per element down. So those are some strategies for choosing a mesh size. I start with the automatic one and then look for high gradients and uh, and uh, uh, refine where necessary locally. It's not necessary to refine everything in the model. Okay. 